Good luck with the blood chemistry testing. Hope everything comes down. My name is Jeff Meredith, as David mentioned, and I lead our consumer business uh, at Lenovo. It's a pleasure to be with you all today. I know that CES is a crazy time for all of us, so thanks for taking a little bit of your time out to spend with us to hear about some of the exciting new products that we have uh, this year. At Lenovo, we're very proud of our PC heritage, as well as our history of bringing innovative, standout products to market. As we've evolved our, evolved our business over the last few years and bridged from our traditional PC business into new areas like AR and VR and smart home, uh, we've really expanded our focus to become a leader in consumer technology. We continue to leverage our product know-how uh, and our innovative spirit, but we do it in the context more of customer experiences rather than product first experiences. So it's in that vein that you'll hear from us today four new products, but really four distinctive experiences that we want to bring to market. Just to tee into that, you'll hear us talk about an always-on, always-connected PC experience for that mobile, on-the-go uh, person who really wants to make sure that they're always, uh, always connected. Next, you'll hear about a visually interactive smart home device, one that extends beyond just voice and gives you visual interaction. Lastly, we'll talk about how we bring both content consumption as well as content creation to VR to make it much more of a mainstream uh, user experience. So one of the things that we've realized that as we shift from a product focus to a customer focus, we have really stepped up our partnership engagement with leaders in our industry. We realize that it's really essential that we marry the core technology the hardware and the software together to make a great overall experience. So you'll hear from leaders at Qualcomm, leaders at Microsoft, as well as Google today with me, and I'll bring them on stage so we can talk about both the products, but also some of the story uh, and the experience that we were going for with each of the products. So let me move into the meat of the discussion today. While computers still play a very major role uh, in our productivity, we can't help but to acknowledge that the phone is with us all the time. It's always on, uh, instantly on, always connected. So we really strive to emulate some of these natural experiences in our PCs. And we've made a bold move in this direction today, and this leads me to our very first announcement. The new Lenovo Mix 630 detachable. This one actually. So the MiG 630 um, detachable product, let me give you a good angle of it here, has two core benefits. The first is that we've integrated 4G LTE and eSIM capability. This closely mirrors what you've come to expect on your smartphones. Second, we've engineered the product for an amazing 20 hours of battery life more than one full day of capability for the product in terms of battery life. The MiG 630 features Qualcomm Snapdragon mobile PC platform, as well as Windows 10S. And to give a little bit more insight into both of those attributes of the product, I'd like to invite two key partners, Don McGuire, uh, as well as Matt Barlow on stage. Don is the VP of Global Product Marketing at Qualcomm, as well Matt is a corporate VP of uh, Windows Marketing. So, Don Matt, join me on stage. Thank you. So, the mobile PC uh, platform. Don, can you share with us a little bit more detail? It's something that's new, and we're one of the early partners with you on that. Talk, talk to our audience a little bit more about the mobile PC platform. Sure, absolutely. First of all, congratulations on the launch of the Mix 630. What a stunning design. Um, and we're so excited that Lenovo chose uh, Snapdragon OpenC platform uh, to kind of bring this device to life. The, the benefits of, of, of Snapdragon really can be summed up by bringing the best of the smartphone to the PC. And there's really three key kind of pillars to the value proposition. One is that always on, always connected experience that Jeff, you mentioned. Second is the ability to produce thin and light and really creative designs because of the small world's first 10 nanometer integrated platform. And then the third thing is the battery life story, right? Which, which um, has been sort of a buzz in the media lately, but delivering up to 20 hours of battery life 
and you know, almost weeks of standby is another kind of killer app uh, for this. So we're really excited to be part of this. Um, the third, the, the, kind of the final pillar to this experience is really our partnership with Microsoft and bringing the Always Connected PC to market. Um, and, and that fact that this is just full Windows 10, this is Windows 10 as you know it and as you love it. And I'm sure Matt's going to kind of tell you all about that. So I'm going to hand it over to Matt to talk about Windows 10. Yeah, please do, Matt. Dive right in on, uh, on the Windows experience that you would expect to see out of the Mix 630. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is great. So again, I want to say two thanks, and it's really great to be here to welcome Lenovo into the Always Connected PC family with our great Qualcomm partner here with Don, and really showcasing the benefits of modern Windows 10 devices. When I think about the Always Connected PC, and especially when I look at the Mix 630, just like an amazing device, I just think about the benefits that Always Connected PCs provide. It's a, it's a new breed of PC. Combining the best of the mobile experience, right, instant on and, and connectivity no matter where you happen to be, with the greatness of the Windows experience, right, the creative platform and powerful computing, all in one device that is always connected, leveraging LTE and Wi-Fi and not even the customer have to think about connection, just opening the device and moving is an incredible experience. Battery life is unbelievable. When I think about the, the need for devices with long battery life, 20 hours of usage is unreal. But I even think the standby, having standby being measured in weeks versus hours or days is an incredible differentiator for this new platform. It runs Windows 10 in S mode, which is a great operating system to begin with. It does all the great things you can expect from Windows. Start menu, file explorer, being able to use Paint 3D, Cortana, use um, uh, Minecraft and more. And if for some reason your application isn't available in the Windows Store, no problem. You can switch to Windows 10 for free with this particular device. We're excited about that. And lastly, when I think about devices and, and how meaningful they are in the industry today, something as thin and light as that, in the detachable form factor, is something that creators are going to want to have, something that journalists are going to want to use, something that um, uh, uh, all of us who are mobile professionals really care about. Those thin light devices running the best of Windows experiences with all day battery life is absolutely at the core of what we built today. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, both of you guys. I'll, I'll recap quickly uh, the MiG 630. The MiG 630 actually uh, will ship with both the keyboard as well as the pen. Um, it's available at, for $7.99 in the second quarter of this year. So just around the corner. Both the pen and the uh, keyboard come as standard accessories. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate uh, you joining me on stage for the MiG 630. Thank you for the partnership. Uh, thank you. Don's going to hang out with me because we have a few more announcements. Uh, So let me keep going. At IFA last year, I teased a little bit that we'd started a collaboration uh, with the Google Assistant team and with Qualcomm on a product that would bring visual interaction uh, to the smart home experience. So I'm pleased today to really show you the product uh, and detail some of the attributes of the experience for the very first time. To help me do this, I'd like to bring on stage Scott Hoffman, who's the VP of the um, Google Assistant team, uh, to join me. Scott, thank you. So for many years, we've turned to Google for our queries, whether they're simple or complex. Recently, the Assistant has made that experience even more natural for us. We now have conversation, voice interaction, and we get guidance um, from Google throughout the day to get things accomplished. So when we started working with Qualcomm and with Google on this project, we had a very clear vision to take the next step. And the next step would be to add uh, visual interaction to the smart speaker. So not just the audible response, but a visual response, a video-based response to really enhance the overall experience. We thought, wouldn't it be great if rather than trying to follow along on a recipe in printed form or even on your smartphone, if you could have a device right there in your kitchen where the top chef would tell you how to uh, create the, the dish of your choice. Or even a personal one for me, rather than calling my daughter in college and wishing her happy birthday and trying to get the whole family involved, what if we all gathered around in the living room and actually sang her happy birthday in a very comfortable way right from the couch? Lastly, what if I was working upstairs and I wanted to just click on uh, a smart camera in my home and check out what mischief my dog had gotten into down in the kitchen? All of these things uh, were visions or experiences that we wanted to make sure we delivered. So I'm very pleased to announce 
Lenovo Smart Display. The Lenovo Smart Display will enable all of these experiences and much more. So let's bring up the Smart Display. Thank you, Holly. So what makes the Lenovo Smart Display truly stand out? First, it has full HD touchscreen display. It has the Google Assistant built right in. It runs the Qualcomm Home Hub platform. The product comes in both the 10 inch and an 8 inch model, has a front facing camera, with something that we think is really important for users, a privacy shutter uh, that can be physically closed and open. It switches seamlessly from portrait to landscape mode. And the design is really built for domestic use. Minimalistic design, two variants. On the 10 inch, you can see a wood bamboo finish. Fits very naturally into your living room or your kitchen. A soft touch finish, uh, light colored on the eight inch. And for the first time, the Google, one of the very first executions, the Google Assistant uh, has been expanded uh, to a visual interface. Scott, can you talk to us a little bit more about this um, enhanced usage opportunity that a visual interface gives to the Google Assistant? Absolutely. Well, so like Jeff said, for a long time, people have been coming to Google to get answers to all sorts of questions. The Google Assistant brings together our deep investments in AI, things like machine learning, speech recognition, language understanding, in order to create a new way to talk to Google. It's a human, natural kind of conversation to help people get things done. Now we brought the Google Assistant first to smart speakers in the home, and that's been fantastic. People can ask for whatever they want, even from across the room, and get an instant response from the Assistant. But while voice is great, like Jeff said, some use cases are just hard to do with voice alone. You know, if I'm walking through a recipe with a bunch of ingredients or lots of steps, having a visual indicator of where I'm at makes things a lot easier. If I ask about traffic to a new destination, seeing traffic hotspots and alternate routes pop up instantly on a map is a lot better than trying to describe all that verbally. Or if I ask my assistant for an overview of my day, seeing my agenda pop up visually is a lot better than having it read to me hour by hour by hour. And of course, some set of things can only be done when you have a screen. Video calling grandma with Google Duo, watching that instructional YouTube video, or bring up my photos from the beach last weekend with Google Photos. So we're really excited to enable all of that through the Google Assistant on the Lenovo Smart Display. Now, of course, to bring that all together into a beautiful device, it also took some magic under the hood. And to talk about that, let me hand it over to Don. Thanks, Scott. Uh, yeah. Hi, me again. Uh, so, uh, it really does take collaboration amongst leaders like Lenovo and Google and Qualcomm to sort of arrive at where we are today, uh, launching this beautiful Lenovo Smart Display. Um, taking these devices from voice to visual requires the most robust platform possible under the hood. And that's really what the Home Hub platform is all about. Um, as you saw in our release yesterday, we announced the Qualcomm Home Hub platforms. And these platforms uh, uh, have taken all of our kind of DNA of connectivity and performance and power and added AI to make these devices even smarter. So we're really excited that Lenovo, in partnership with Google, were able to bring this to life through the Lenovo Smart Display. And as Scott said, bring all things Google um, to this device. Um, and so, uh, if, so if you want to look at our release for Home Hub, it'll give you all the details on Home Hub. But basically, what we believe is platforms like this really allow these new sets of devices to be launched into market and deliver new experiences to consumers um, and really make Google Assistant rock. So we're excited to be part of this as another one of our announcement today. Uh, and congratulations again on the Smart Display. You know, just to close this one out, the Smart Display, we think, offer, ushers in a whole new experience around uh, in-home devices. Uh, the visual display gives you new use cases that you really have been able to not accomplish before or enhancements to, to things that you've been able to do before but not in an optimal way. So these two products uh, again will launch in the second quarter this year. The 8 inch is available for $199 and the 10 inch starts at $249. Thank you Scott for joining us, sharing more details about the assistant.
Thank you for the partnership as well. So on to the last two products that we'll announce uh, in this session. It's two that I'm very excited about because they push us in a whole new direction uh, in the world of VR. So I'd like to invite a good friend of mine, uh, Clay Bavor, who's the VP of AR and VR at Google, uh, to help me with the announcement and just to go through some of the backstory on this product. Clay, thanks for coming. Thank you. Clay, you know, I remember uh, just a few months back at Google I.O., you teased the product a little bit and talked about that we were working on uh, a collaborative effort, a standalone product around Daydream. And you know, today we get an opportunity to really reveal a lot of the work that we've been doing behind the scenes over the last several months. And it's fun to get to finally share with the world, so I'm super excited about that. And yeah, I remember all the way back to the first discussions we had, we really anchored on this idea that's been important to us at Google all the way back to Google Cardboard and then through to Daydream, which is making VR more approachable, more accessible, and more useful uh, to more people, and, and we hope in time to everyone. Uh, that was, I think, an idea we really shared. Absolutely. And, and I remember as we concepted the product, we even joked, and you know, sometimes I need an aspiration or a vision. Uh, and for me, what I said was, um, I would like to see my parents actually wear a VR headset. If we could get something that they would wear, that would really uh, serve as, as an objective, a far-reaching objective. And we thought about that, and we ran with that premise. And what would cause you know, my mom and dad to strap on a VR headset? And the answer was really simple. Um, they're my kids, they're grandkids. If they could be able to participate in events, special moments in their life, in an immersive way, uh, a fully immersive VR experience, whether it's gymnastics or baseball or soccer or just, you know, a time at the beach. My parents, you know, despite the fact that it would be quite progressive for them, would certainly strap on a VR headset. So this served, uh, this aspiration served as an objective for us as we went along. And mainstream means different things to different people, but that was clearly our goal. So to deliver the experience that I'm sharing with you, well, for, for everyday users, I'm proud to announce our final two products today, our new Daydream offering. First, the Lenovo Mirage Solo headset, which is here, and the Lenovo Mirage uh, camera. You can see the two. So, our objective as we started was not only to create products they were great for consumption, but also great for creation. We felt like this was the way that we would draw in a mainstream customer. The camera and the headset were certainly built with each other in mind. For example, once you've captured moments um, with the camera, you can easily view them in Google Photos, um, in YouTube, or even uh, directly stream them. You can also just simply take the card out of the camera, slide it into the headset, and view it that way. We'll take both products and talk in a little bit more detail about them, and I'll start with the camera. So the camera itself is an easy to use point and shoot camera. You can see the very uh, small footprint of the device. It shoots 4K uh, VR video. It shoots VR photos, as well as gives you the capability to live stream in VR. It has standard Wi-Fi connection, as well as optional LTE for when you're on the go. It has two front-facing, 180-degree field-of-view cameras. This enables the cameras, you can see here, to behave really like our human eye. Um, and gives depth perception uh, by superimposing two images together. This is a really important part of the overall experience. And Clay, if you could share more with our audience today about VR 180, I think it's a main point of differentiation for our experience. Uh, I'd like to hear, have them have your perspective here. So VR, VR 180 is a format we developed, uh, really with three things in mind. The first was making it easy to capture what's important to you. And there are kind of a couple parts of that. One is, turns out if you hand someone a 360 camera, and there are a lot of those out there, people are using them for kind of VR capture, they don't know what to point it at. So they just point it at anything. And, and that's just not how we're used to using cameras. Uh, and so by, by putting both cameras forward, they make it really simple, you, you capture what's there. 
Uh, and second, when, when you're thinking about capturing experience, what matters is usually what's in front of you. Uh, and what we saw in 360 cameras was often you get not only what's in front of you, but also like the large distorted version of your face or your hand, uh, and that was a waste. And, and so we really wanted to streamline the experience and make it easy to capture what matters. Second, and Jeff, you mentioned this, is making the, the content that these cameras produce far more immersive. And a key part to that is making use of the fact that we have two eyes. Our eyes see slightly different views of the world, and our brains combine those images in what's called stereoscopy to give us a sense of depth. So real near things seem near, far things seem far, and the imagery that comes out of these cameras just appears much more realistic and immersive uh, than the alternatives. And the third thing was we wanted to make sure that the content was great in VR, but that was also easy and nice to consume in 2D, on your phone, on your laptop. And the forward-facing camera is, uh, is part of that. Um, and we've also done hard work as part of the camera platform to directly integrate VR 180 into Google Photos, into YouTube. Uh, and in fact, one of the things I'm most excited about with this camera is when it's connected, with a couple button taps, you can open up a direct live stream in VR 180 to YouTube, and millions of people can consume it. So we're really excited about how all that's come together. Uh, it turned out it was tricky to make a, a camera, which literally fits in your pocket, do all these things. We had to get a lot in there, um, and we worked with Don and his team to make that happen, so you can talk a bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Once again, congratulations on the Mirage camera. I, I think it's super cool. Um, the VR 180 is pretty amazing, and it's based on our uh, connected camera platform, Qualcomm's connected camera platform. So we've got the, the dual cameras uh, in there and the power performance, um, and it's really exciting for us to see something like this manifest itself outside the smartphone. We've, we've literally integrated cameras and camera technology in billions of smartphones over the years, but to see it manifest itself in something like this is pretty amazing, and as we continue to grow outside of the phone, um, having products like this as a showcase that Lenovo has built along with Google, it's, it's really exciting for us. Um, and so we're really excited about the camera and, and the combination of the solo and the camera. Just excited to be part of it, and we know that because the, the platform is so robust, that the users are going to have a great experience as well. Thank you, Don. So, as, we, as we've all talked about, the experience is really optimized uh, together. We felt like that was essential if we wanted to step up the quality uh, and the experience around VR. You can upload photos in Google Photos, as Clay mentioned, and live streaming is definitely a, a capability uh, that we wanted to bring in order to make those memories not be something that are delayed, but can share in an instant. So, as we move from the camera to the headset, uh, let me get into the last announcement that we have today. The Mirage Solo headset is the world's very first standalone uh, daydream headset with inside out positional tracking. So the headset itself is designed, and this is something that you know Clay and I and, and I and our teams have worked together for a long time. We, we start from concept and work hardware and software together throughout the whole process. So it makes for a much more natural VR experience. It's a standalone headset, so no need for a PC, no need for a smartphone, no need for any messy cables. It's really easy to set up. This was a big part of what we wanted to achieve in the experience. You put the headset on, there's a couple of buttons that you press, um, and you're ready to go. And lastly, we worked really hard uh, on the headset in terms of design to achieve the comfort that we wanted. Any of you guys have used a VR headset over time know that comfort, especially in long immersive sessions, can be a bit of a challenge. So the way that we uh, designed the product and the materials that we use were important. The head, the head strap itself provides uh, weight balancing to keep the pressure off of the nose. Um, the rubber uh, that we have here, the uh, soft facial uh, rubber that we have actually entirely blocks out all of the external light so you have a truly immersive experience not you know sometimes light seeping in all of the controls are accessible on the right hand side of the product and for those of you who wear glasses like me um, it's got a little extra space in there just to make sure you also have a comfortable experience the thermal performance was something that we could really optimize because of the standalone nature of the product. So all of the components are optimized to deliver very high quality VR experience for longer periods of immersive viewing. The last thing that I want to talk about relative to comfort, and, and I'll uh, do this collaboratively with you, Clay, is we did a lot of work on tracking. 
and tracking is really how you achieve comfort on a device like this, and, and I think a big step forward in a standalone device. So talk a little bit more about positional tracking and what we've done here. Yes, what it, it's uh, one of the things we're most excited about in the product that it uh, makes use of a new technology we've developed called WorldSense, which enables what's called inside-out positional tracking. So the headset not only tracks your rotation, but your movement in space. And so the view in the virtual world exactly corresponds to how you're moving in the physical world. And not only does that make the experience a lot more comfortable, it dramatically increases the sense that you're really there in the, the jargon presence. I really feel like you're inside the scene. Um, and it's based on years of work we've done in simultaneous localization and mapping, or SLAM, uh, technology we've developed for Tango and, and AR4 and other related things. Um, and, it, and it really uh, it really improves the experience so much. It's a really special part of the product. Uh, and with it, you can duck, dodge, move, um, and really just move naturally, and everything moves just as you'd expect it to in, in real life, and it really improves the experience. So we're really excited about that one. Turns out it was uh, tricky to get positional tracking and high performance there and high performance graphics running at the so same time. We knew when we ran into those challenges, uh, we called up our buddies uh, at Qualcomm. Yeah, I and, that's right. And don't, <laughs> Well, I, you know, I, I feel like we've won the, sorry, I feel like we've won the uh, Snapdragon Quad Fecta today with Lenovo, um, because um, I, I get another great device integrating our Snapdragon platform. Um, uh, so again, congratulations on the Mirage Solo. Um, uh, it's another great example of uh, what we believe um, in, in a moniker Qualcomm is, is VR was meant to be mobile. So, uh, so, but in order to do that, you have to have the power and performance, um, to be able to not only deliver that experience for consumers, but allow Lenovo to create such a great design. Right? It's comfortable, it's, it's sleeker, it's lighter, as Jeff mentioned, if you have glasses or no glasses. So to, to be able to have that flexibility is something that we pride ourselves by, by having such an integrated and small package um, and, and packing all the power performance that is needed to deliver a great experience. Snapdragon allows you to do that. So from six degrees of freedom of movement to 3D audio, 4K visuals with natural interactions, all that is packed into Snapdragon in VR. Really excited to see what experiences this device will allow consumers um, to, to kind of utilize all the great daydream content um, that Google offers. Um, I, again, just again, really excited to be part of it. And you know, number four. Yeah, best best hit done last uh, last go today. I'm, I'm sure you're all wondering. Yeah. I, I am solely responsible for all these products. I'm really quite exhausted. It's been really busy. And I'm gonna go take a nap after. Yeah. But uh, you know, thanks again. So the last thing that I want to talk about, and, and we've talked about user creating content and it's enabled with the camera, but clearly there's been a lot of work done in, uh, over the last several months on enhancements to daydream content. And I'd like to uh, share some details about some of the latest and greatest content around daydream. So we're super excited about the headset, how it brings hardware and software together. But ultimately what people experience in these things is the content, places you can go, things you can do. And uh, first of all, just to say it again, we're so excited to see how people use the camera. Right? You can throw it in your pocket and we expect a, a lot to happen with it. We've also been working on uh, an experience called Blade Runner Revelations. It's a, an immersive narrative and game uh, that we've created. And the, the graphics are phenomenal and really shows off the world sense technology um, and also the high performance graphics available on the headset. There are over 250 other apps and experiences from developers uh, on the Daydream platform as well, from uh, the likes of uh, Electronic Arts, CCP. This is one of my favorites shown here, Virtual Virtual Reality, which is even better right, when you can actually step in the world and move around it with positional tracking. And we've also brought a lot of the best of Google's apps to Daydream. So, for example, uh, Street View, you can visit uh, over 70 countries. Google Arts and Culture, which is shown here, you can explore masterpieces, painting, sculptures around the world. Uh, and then my personal favorite is YouTube VR, where you can step inside tons and tons of very high quality VR videos, uh, and also step back and have your own kind of personal private big screen for traditional YouTube videos. Um, and again, uh, with that experience, positional tracking and world sense just makes it sync. So we're really excited about uh, what's coming to Daydream, and in particular the content that's going to make use of some of the unique capabilities of, of the new headset. So um, we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Clay. So let me close this up for us today. The Len uh, Lenovo uh, Mirage Solo. Whoops. I lost the controller. The controller is very durable. Very durable.
Um, the headset, standalone, offers no PC, uh, requires no PC, no phones, uh, no cables. Built for VR, first standalone headset uh, with revolutionary world sense uh, that Clay has talked about. Six degrees of freedom, very comfortable overall usage experience. Easy to set up, uh, just put it on your head in a couple clicks. And finally, the ergonomic design uh, of the product was really made for comfort over long periods of usage. As you can tell, we're very proud uh, of both of the products individually. But we really think that when you bring them together as an overall experience, they're much more powerful. <coughs> Mirage Solo as well as the Mirage Camera uh, are both available starting in Q2 this year. And with these two products, that we truly believe that we're gonna take a pretty bold step forward in terms of making VR ready and available and more interesting to a mainstream audience. Thank you guys very much, Don, uh, Clay. Appreciate you guys, the partnership, and joining me on stage. So let me wrap it up for this. The latest, from the latest Moto Mods uh, to the always connected mobile computing of the MiG 630, to a, an enhanced Google Assistant experience in the Lenovo Smart Display, and the immersive and personalized experiences of the Mirage Solo and Mirage Camera. We're very excited about the experiences that we've shared with you today and the products that deliver them. We're certainly glad to team up with leaders in our industry like Qualcomm, like Google and Microsoft, uh, Indiegogo, uh, Vital, and Livermorium, as, as Jim talked about. Partnerships makes these, make these experiences really very meaningful and rich. So, as we close out, we'd like to invite all of you to be some of the very first to try out the experiences. We have demos available, um, so as I close out the session now, uh, you all have times for your demos. Enjoy them, enjoy the products, and enjoy your CES. Thank you.